Welcome to my channel, INTJ Island. Today, I'm going to discuss the interrupted INTJ. When I was working on my video yesterday, I was interrupted a few times. In fact, after all the things I got through for my video and a project for my wife's YouTube channel, I found that I had worked 14 hours before I could finally rest. As I have gotten older, that feels like a very long day. Doing things for my wife is something I love, so she gets a pass most of the time. I do snap at her sometimes when I'm at a point where I simply cannot stop and then come back to what I was doing without a lot of wasted time trying to recover the line of thought I was working on. I feel bad afterwards, but she usually understands, and she scoots out of the room until I reach a good point to disengage. Then I go and see what she wanted. Sometimes her feelings do get hurt, and I always feel bad when that happens, because I never want to do that. After all these wonderful years of marriage, we understand our boundaries pretty well on both sides. For example, when I'm going to record my video, I go to my wife and warn her that I can't be interrupted until I'm done. Then when I am finished, I go back and let her know that I am done, in case she needs something from me. We know each other and have worked out a system that works very well for us. However, I also had to avoid answering the phone yesterday when the party on the other end knew I was here. I simply could not afford the time to get into a long conversation. I only just barely had the time and energy to get through the work demands for the day as it was. I fear that feelings might have been hurt, but there was nothing for it. When I am focused on a task, I am truly antisocial in the worst meaning of the term. I don't just want to be left alone. I need to be left alone, and I will react badly if someone insists on pushing into my space when I am on a roll with some task. It is easy to shut off your phone, but what do you do when someone pushes into your office or knocks at your front door? There you are, standing face to face with the interruption. My normal reaction is to block the door if I can and hold off the intruder. If that is not possible, I will give very short answers to questions, volunteering nothing that will extend the conversation, all the while presenting a glaring death stare until the conversation is concluded. I will use open rudeness if necessary to end the interaction. It is not the person I am upset with, but the interruption. But that is easily misinterpreted by the other party. Feelers and extroverts can be offended, often deeply so. They truly don't understand the singleness of purpose I have when I am working on something intently. My approach to interrupters is directness. I state what I need. I am busy, and I don't have time for an interruption. Please be brief and state what you need. I am formal, and I am blunt, and this might be someone I normally am cordial and friendly with. I can come across as hard and rude, even though that is not my intention. I want termination of the interaction so I can get back to what I am focused upon at the moment. This is not personal to the other party. I would feel exactly the same way about anyone interrupting me. If I am successful in cutting the interruption short, the other party may well go away with hurt feelings and think that I am not only rude but arrogant or that I feel superior to them. I don't want to convey any of that. I just want to be left alone. Is that asking so much? Apparently it is for many people. And the thing that is most difficult for me to understand is the fact that the other party never views his intrusion into my space and the occupation of my time as being rude. When he demands my time and attention, it is viewed as his right, and it is my insistence that my time is my own which is unfair. Is it any wonder that over the years I have grown emotional porcupine quills? Over time, I have managed to carve out my space, which usually is left unviolated by others. Partly it has been the jobs that I have chosen to take, and partly it is by standing up for my space, despite the hurt feelings of others. It has led to a very small number of people I interface with regularly, and a lot of alone time where I can think, write, and work on things that I value. Why that should be considered rude or unfair is outside of my ability to understand. It demands little of others, 
and I try as much as possible to be self-sufficient so they can do what they want without me making demands upon them. Alas, that seems to win no points with other people, though. They don't enjoy being left alone the way I do. Each personality type has its own needs and desires, and the needs and desires of other types are often completely incomprehensible. We are so different that at times it seems to be a wonder that we can all live together in the same world. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'll see you next time.